Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. Great to be with you. Hey, it's always a pleasure speaking with my guest uh, today, uh, Dr. Grace Volto. She is the founder and executive director of the Edmund Burke Institute, a Washington-based uh, think tank. Great source. You can check them out at edmundburkeinstitute.org or simply go online to relevantradio.com. Keyword, Drew, Grace and I have um, initiated a series uh, in which we, uh, well, every single, well, just about every week, we've missed a few here, uh, have taken a look at our graceful heritage, and that's what we've we've called the series. Today we're looking at uh, an article that Grace put together called The Crisis of Masculinity, and this is an issue that we cannot talk enough about. It's an issue that should be visited and revisited, and uh, men, we should take an inventory of where we stand on this issue. Uh, Grace, that article, of course, is going to be posted at your web page as well, right, at uh, the Edmund Burke Institute? It is. It's on the home page. You just click on our Graceful Heritage, and you will see today's installment called The Crisis of Masculinity. And we also have it, if you're in traffic, you can't remember that, you'll find relevantradio.com, keyword Drew. There'll be a link. The title's The Crisis of Masculinity. And, uh, Grace, great job uh, on the article. I think history is so important in understanding how did we get from this point where the father was the head of the family, uh, where he was the leader, both uh, within the, the family, the community, and the world of, uh, of, of politics, to being totally emasculated right now. And you talked a little bit about the 19th century and, and how this movement, the feminist movement, gained strength in the 20th century. Um, bring me through the timeline, if you will. There were other mindsets. There were books that have come out that offered uh, insight into how uh, how the battle for female rights was shaped, and maybe you can share a little bit of that as well. Yes, I would point the audience to a really interesting book that was published in 2006 by a Harvard professor by the name of Harvey C. Mansfield, and the book is called Manliness. And what he does is he does a really good job of explaining how we got to the present day. And one of the major facts is that the feminist movement was initially a battle based on individual rights, very much like men had sought to get their individual rights within a feudal structure, whereas rights were defined according to classes. So if you were in the aristocratic class, you would have greater rights than if you were in a previous class. So men, working class men and middle class men, over time, had achieved their individual rights. And the feminist movement, especially in the 19th century, led even by Christian women, Christian female thinkers, was going along that path of saying, look, women should be educated, women can have a public role, and women should have the vote, and they should have individual rights. Had we just remained on that track, we would have simply emancipated women mm -hmm. without having done damage to society. But what happened in the 20th century was that the feminist movement was essentially hijacked. It was hijacked along two basic strands of thought. There was one influence which came out of the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. Yeah. And Nietzsche argued that there is no God and there is no natural order and that we can simply remake ourselves according to our will. So the feminists of the 20th century, they took this idea and they applied it to women, and they said, you know what? There's no such thing as male and female. And for a woman to be fully free, she must free herself from the idea that she is female. So they took that strand of thought from Nietzsche, and then they took a very destructive strand of thought from Karl Marx, Marx argued that the family itself is a tool of economic exploitation of all individuals, and it's a tool of social control that the bourgeoisie uses. And part of that social control is the man's domination of the woman. And so they took so the feminist movement took this whole language of patriarchal oppression and seeing the family as an economic tool of oppression. Now, if you combine those two things together, the thoughts of Nietzsche and the thoughts of Marx, and you apply them to feminism, what you have is the idea that a woman is totally free if she is free from all the demands of the family. So what happened in the 20th century was the Christian understanding of a woman's role was completely turned over its head because it was two atheistic philosophies that took over the feminist movement. 
Instead, what we should have had was simply a straightforward battle for individual rights married with the Christian understanding of human nature, of the human person, and of the male and female role in a family. That would have been a much healthier way to go. So it is a very, very sad state of affairs that we have gone so far off the mark when the feminist movement could have been a source of great joy to both men and women. In reality today, although it comes with great joy, it also comes with a terrible, terrible price that has been enacted on both men and women and on children. And one of the really sad facts of all this is that the essential thrust of the leftist uh, assault on bourgeois morality, mm -hmm. it must be to assault the male. Now think about this for a second, which is what I write in the piece. Everybody knows that when you are at war with a civilization, what you must do is you must either destroy the men mm -hmm. or you must completely incapacitate them, pacify them, mollify them. Well, that is what has been done to our men in the West. They've been pacified. They have been mollified. They are, in many ways, really adrift. And as a result, we see a complete decline in Western civilization. It's no accident that with the decapitation of the male from families, we now have a crisis, a demographic crisis, where we're not even able to reproduce ourselves. And we're not able to reproduce ourselves because, essentially, we've told men we don't really want you to take a leading role. And one of the previous leading roles that men took was to ensure that their own family reproduced bountifully and that that was a way of um, ensuring that not only his family lineage would remain intact, but also a way of honoring his kin group, his community, and his nation. We have instead said to the man, you really have a much diminished role. You are really quite insignificant. And my heart goes out to men out there because so many of them do not know or understand that they have a divine mission, which is based on their gender. And it's very sad that they're unaware of that. It, it, it is interesting, though. And you, you take a look at the fruit of this and where it's led. Right now, more marriages end up in divorce than stay together. We're seeing the family structure. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, disintegrate as a result of this because uh, men no longer fulfill their roles as being leaders of the family, protectors, providers. Uh, where do you see us heading, uh, Grace? I, I'm curious, doctor, in, in terms of the, uh, of the future, if we continue to allow men to be emasculated and have this disorientation of, of proper roles uh, within the family and within society at large, where, where, do, you see us, uh, where do you see us heading in a, in, in a decade from now? Well, I think that very sadly, we are committing civilizational suicide. Uh, our birth rates show that. And what's happening instead is that there are other civilizations, like the Muslim civilization, which is going to fill that vacuum. Uh, the Islamic faith currently provides very, very strong gender roles, and they are reproducing much, much faster than we are. And so this whole project that the West has embarked on is leading straight to death. I mean, what we see very clearly is that we, when Nietzsche pronounced mm -hmm. there is no God, if you actually follow what he said, which in many cases we have because we've accepted a great deal of his, his nihilistic vision, once you remove God from the center of our lives, we eventually cease to exist, and that is the path that we as Western civilization are going down. You know, women think that by... Um, having emasculated men, they freed themselves. In reality, we're all committing civilizational suicide. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. My guest today, Dr. Grace Voto. Check out their website, edmundburkinstitute.org. A great series, and, and, and I want to thank uh, Dr. Voto publicly for, uh, for her effort in giving us a look at life through the eyes uh, of, of our faith and uh, you know the Christian heritage uh, the past 2,000 years is rich, whether it's the early uh, chapters of the spread of Christianity or some of the great moral threats that face us in the 19th, 20th, and now into the 21st uh, century. Uh, Dr. Voto has agreed to come on, be part of the program, and what is a continuing series here on the Drew Mariani Show called Our Graceful Heritage. And she's here, oh, I think every two weeks. And um, basically uh, today we're taking a look at the crisis of masculinity, and I think that's at the heart of a lot of different issues 
uh, within the family and within our country at large. Uh, there's a link at our graceful at, at edmundburkinstitute.org. You also find one at relevantradio.com. Keyword Drew. Doc, let's go to the phones. We'll go to Yorkville, Illinois first and say hello to Sue. Hi, Sue. 